Question 11, Isaac surveyed his classmates. Here are the results. Which Venn diagram best supports the pet survey results? So, it's a lot of information. There's four Venn diagrams to pick from. It's just about going down the checklist of information, seeing which Venn diagram keeps up with this data accurately. So, first statement, 25 students had dogs, and that's total, 25 had dogs. Okay, so looking at the Venn diagram in the dog circle, if I add this, 5 plus 4 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12, 12 plus 13, yes, that's a total of 25. Let's go to uh, next one, B. Well, if I added all these, since there's already 25 here, if I added more to 25, it would go over. So this one can't be it. What about C? 9 plus 4, 13. Plus 7 is 20. Plus 5, 25. Okay, this is fits. D, again, same problem with the B. 25 is already there, and they have three more numbers. So that's definitely going to go over. It can't be D. So A and B and C are the big remaining options so I look at the next statement to check 28 students had cats okay cats 10 plus 5 is 15 15 plus 4 is 19 19 plus 9 is 28 over here 2 plus 9 is 11 11 plus 4 is 15 15 plus 13 is 28 okay and remember the total that have cats okay you include all the numbers in the whole cat circle even if they're in another circle as well okay next piece of information 30 students had fish here we go fish 14 plus 9 is 23 plus 4 is 27 plus 3 is 30 okay 16 plus 13 is 19 19 plus 4 is 23 23 plus 7 is 30 okay that's still good Next one, nine students who had only dogs and cats. So only dogs and cats. Let's see about that. <clears throat> here's the cat circle, here's the dog circle. Where they cross is here. And there are two sections that have dogs and cats. This one and this one. Five have dogs and cats. And four have dogs and cats. But since they're in this fish circle, that means they also have fish. This means this one is five only that have dogs and cats, which is not nine only. So let's look at C then. Here, the dogs and cats intersection is here. Nine have only dogs and cats, which fits this statement. That means C is the best answer. Okay, it's saying this triangle is reflected across the y-axis, which is here, this long line, the y-axis, to form a new triangle, which order pair represents the coordinates of f prime. Okay, go to the figure. Imagine flipping this over, since it's a reflection. Imagine flipping it over this y-axis over here. That means it's going to show up flipped over on this side. Let's look at the original f. Because it wants to know the new F, the original F, you need to know. Go over to negative 3 and up 1. Negative 3, 1 is the original point. It wants to know the new point. So what happens when you flip it over the y-axis is the x-coordinate ends up changing. Okay, just imagine it's not in this area, it's over in this area. So the x's will be here. However, the y does not change. It's still up here at level 1. When you flip it over over here, it will still be at level 1. Now, the x coordinate was negative 3 originally. When you flip it over, it becomes positive 3. So that point here, same level 1, but over on the on the x, it's positive 3 and 1 for y. Here it was negative 3 and 1 for y. So the point should be negative, or sorry, positive 3, 1. And that leaves 
g as a best answer. Number 13. Three cups of strawberries for every one and a half cup of yogurt. How much yogurt for two cups of strawberries? Okay, this is classic proportion. Okay, I'll do the setup by writing three and one and a half together. Three strawberry for one and a half. Okay, that's an S right there. Okay, one and a half yogurt equals it said two strawberry I'll put two strawberry keep in mind that the strawberries the numbers for strawberry should be next to each other and I don't know how much yogurt put X cross multiply and then divide so one and a half I can change to 1.5 I do times two this is an S so don't confuse this with it, this is two strawberry. So two times 1.5 will give me three. Now the second part is to divide this by the other number I hadn't used yet. I haven't used the other three, so I'll use it now. Three divided by three is one. That's what x is. X is one cup or one yeah cup of yogurt. which is answer choice A. Now, number 14. What is the probability that a green cube will land with an even number face up and a white cube will land with a number greater than two face up? Okay, so probability, when you have two situations, you want one to happen and the other, you're going to multiply the probability of one to the probability of other. First thing, number cube. Okay, that means it's like a die. There are six numbers on the faces of the cubes. So, first probability, even number. Okay, even numbers on the number cube are two, four, and six. That's three out of the total six are even. So I'll write that probability over here. 3 out of 6 times the second probability greater than 2. Number greater than 2. That means the numbers 3, 4, and 5 and 6 are greater than 2. That's 4 of them that are greater than 2 and there are 6 total options so that's my second probability 4 out of 6 I multiply them 3 times 4 is 12 6 times 6 is 36 I can simplify this by dividing by 12 12 divided by 12 36 divided by 12 1 third is my probability and that answer choice is H Number 15, Ashton needs 150 in quarters for a not, for a coin operated car wash. He already has 75 cents. Which equation can be used to find Q, the number of additional quarters he needs? Okay, normally put the goal or what you're trying to get at the end or alone. Here, his goal is to get $1.50, so I put that at the end or put it alone here and it's also done here in D but B and C do not have that their goal is to get to 0 0.75 that's not right so A and D are the best answers I look at the differences between those they just have the 0.75 and the 0.25 swapped in this case it said he already had 0.75 okay that stands alone not with the Q okay it stands alone like D and just to be short, 0.25Q, that makes sense because 25 cents is how much a quarter is worth. 
So you would have to multiply 0.25 times however many quarters you have. So the answer is D. Mr. Stein purchased 2.25 pounds of meat that cost 2.80 per pound. How much change should he receive for $20? To find the cost of what he pays for the meat, do the pounds times the cost per pound. 2.25 times 2.8. I'm going to do that over here. And then add, okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's $6.30. I do next, since he paid with a $20 bill, I subtract $6.30 from $20. Two decimal places, okay. $13.70 is what the change he got back. That's G. Number 17. It has a picture of a triangular prism and asks to find the best estimate of the volume. So, I use the volume formula. This can be found on the reference chart that comes with the exam. V equals capital B times H. To find volume, I need to know the base area, which is capital B. To find the area of the base, I look at the shape. It's a triangle. I use the formula for area of a triangle, which is one half lowercase b times H. And then I also have the height of the prism at the end. So that needs to be at the end okay capital B is all of this now the base of the triangle is 23 and 3 fourths I'll round that up to 24 so it'll be 1 half 24 times the height of the triangle is 11 and 3 fourths I'll round that up to 12 and then the height of the prism is this section right here 2 but at at the end 1 half of 24 is 12 12 times 12 is 144, and then I'm going to multiply 144 times 2, which gives me 288. And I look at the answer choices. The best answer is C, 288. Now number 18, a sports drink contains 8% fruit juice. How is this percent written as a decimal? All you have to do is write the percent first, 8%, and normally when it's just a whole number, the decimal goes at the end. To change it to a decimal, I move this decimal left two spaces. And if there's a gap here, I put a zero. So it's 0 0.08. That is 8%.